Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Jason O'Neill and what we're going to be talking about in this video is the five ways to start selling on Amazon. So the first way to start selling on Amazon, which I think is the easiest way, the way for you to kind of like start learning, which is retail arbitrage. What retail arbitrage is, is essentially like you hopping in your car, you driving over to Walmart or Target or C is Sears even around anymore? Eh, we're just not going to say Sears. JCPenney, they're not around either, but you can go to any brick and mortar retail store essentially you're going to take your cell phone out you're going to you're going to have an amazon app on your phone you're going to walk around the shelves you're going to start scanning stuff and what it's going to do is pull up that product on amazon see what it's selling for it's going to tell you the sales rank of the product it's going to tell you how much it's going to cost for you to fulfill on that product and at the end of the day what's your buy cost and what's it selling for now the pros of that model easy to get started, doesn't really require a whole lot of money. You could start with one unit of one product. The, the cons of it, not the most scalable model. It takes a lot of time. You have to jump in your car, you gotta drive around. You know, the people that are doing it at the highest, highest level, they're spending tons and tons of hours and tons and tons of time. It's a great business model. However, just not the most scalable of all the business models. Number two, the second business model that we're gonna talk about which is online arbitrage. Now, online arbitrage is similar to retail arbitrage. However, the perk is you could sit at your computer and do it. Now, the downside of that, since it's easier for you to do it without having to get in your car and drive around town, that also means it's easier for competitors to do it. So you're gonna not just be competing with people in your local area, whereas retail arbitrage, you're really restricted to what's in your kind of like your local area, whereas online arbitrage, it's a matter of people that can get access to those products from around the world, right? And that you're generally going to be dealing with a lot more competition. However, again, a little bit more scalable, right? Because you can get access to more products. There's more tools that are out there that can help you identify the products, but essentially the same concept. It's about what can I buy the product for? What's my fulfillment costs? And is there a profit in it, right? And online arbitrage just gives you the opportunity to find those. Maybe you're using discount gift cards. Maybe you're using coupons. Maybe that supplier is having a big sale. Maybe the product's on clearance, right? It just gives you access to a lot more products outside of your local area. And beyond that, more of a black hat, gray hat way of doing it. We're just going to say black hat, okay? More of a black hat way for you to do online arbitrage is through the fulfillment cycle, uh, the fulfillment method of drop shipping, where the retailer will actually ship the product out for you. Now, technically, it's against Amazon's policies. If you're using Walmart or Target or Home Depot or any big box retailer, it's gonna be very challenging for you to get away with it long term. Whereas if you're buying the inventory and you're shipping it in to Amazon, not against the policies, perfectly legal, nothing wrong with it. Just again, not as scalable as you'd like it to be because you're still a little bit restricted in the amount of inventory that you can buy. Most retailers aren't gonna sell you hundreds or thousands of units, they're gonna limit you, especially on like really popular products. Like for example, if you find some toys or something like that, they're only gonna allow you to buy a couple of those toys. Reason why, why would they do that? They just don't want to have one person come buy everything and none of their other customers can find it anymore. So that's why they limit you. So again, online arbitrage, great way to go about doing it. You might take a little bit lower margins because it's you know a lot more competition. However, probably a little bit more scalable than retail arbitrage because you have the ability to now source through a whole bunch of retailers that might not be local to you. You have access to a lot more products that maybe in your local area, one product selling, whereas this retailer throughout all of their com all of their stores, let's use Walmart for example, they might have something on clearance online that's not on clearance at the local retailer. So the third model that we're gonna talk about is wholesale FBA. Now what wholesale is, it, what makes it awesome is you're gonna be able to get access to name brand products that are already selling on the Amazon marketplace. And a lot of times you can buy hundreds or even thousands of units of these particular products. The downside is it's harder to get set up with these wholesale relationships. If you don't have any experience at all selling on Amazon, 
Wholesale, while it's a great way to grow a multi seven figure, even eight figure business, or maybe even nine figures as you grow it over time, uh, that kind of business is very, very scalable. The downside is it's challenging to open relationships, especially when you don't already have experience selling on the Amazon platform. So I think the other two models that we've talked about so far, gonna be a little bit easier for you to kind of cut your teeth, get experience, and then once you get some sales under your belt, wholesale is a natural kind of way of growing into the next stage of, of building your business. Because again, with wholesale, you can get set up with distributors that have access to tens or even hundreds of brands and sometimes hundreds of thousands of products that are already selling on Amazon and with some tools that are out there you can run them through kind of tools that are out there that are going to help you be able to kind of start cherry picking the best of the best of those products and sometimes you could buy one product that it's selling three or four or five thousand times a month so it really doesn't take tons and tons of products now the downside to wholesale very competitive, right? Just like anything, a lot of competitors around that are, that are out there. So it requires you to really just have a real clear understanding of sourcing products, making good buying decisions, managing your inventory, managing relationships with your suppliers. But if you can master all those things, growing a wholesale FBA business is very, very scalable. Now, one of the other challenges that um, sellers run into with wholesale FBA is prepping the products because you kind of need to have a way to get your products received from a wholesaler prepared and shipped out into the amazon fulfillment network now thankfully there's prep companies out there so you can probably go out there and google the best prep companies out there for uh, for wholesale fba and all you got to do is pick up the phone call them and set up a, an arrangement with them. And that way, when you process your order with your wholesaler, you can say, hey, I want you to ship it off to this prep center. Downside to that, costs money, right? So that cost of having them prepare the products, if you're only making like $2, it might cost you a dollar for you to send it to them. So you might be losing half of the profit already. The other side is, hey, you receive it at your house, if you can receive that many units, if you're getting thousands of units, probably not gonna be able to receive that many units, but if you're only getting like 10, 20, 30 units, you can get it at your house. But again, a little bit more challenging for you to scale because you just don't have that much room at your house to prep products. But again, if you're just kind of getting started, really good way for you to kind of like start learning. And then as you grow, you have to figure out, do I wanna invest into a warehouse or do I wanna use a prep center? Prep center is gonna be less cost up front more cost per unit warehouse going to be more cost but overall if you're doing enough volume it's going to be made up for in the fact that you're doing a lot of volume but you know again we're just talking about the business models everything has its pros and cons whereas wholesale fba is by far of the three the most scalable model and the probably the most difficult to execute on as well at the same time you know so we're, we're talking about kind of like scalability in difficulty right the more scalable the model is kind of the more difficult it is as well to execute on the model right so the fourth model that we're going to talk about is private label a lot of the information that you're going to see on youtube is related to kind of like what's called um amazon fba right so a lot of times that amazon fba um, is going to be related to people that are creating their own brands of products, which is private label, essentially where you're finding a manufacturer of a particular kind of product, you're reaching out to the manufacturer, you're negotiating terms with them, you're negotiating costs, you're negotiating how they're gonna get that product prepared, how they're gonna get it shipped in the Amazon fulfillment centers. And you know, at the end of the day, hopefully you make a good decision and that product sells. Now, the upside to private label, by far the most scalable of all, because if you pick a good product, right, that product might sell thousands and thousands of times. And because you're manufacturing the product, there's more margin built into it. You have a lot more uh, wiggle room to be able to advertise the product. You have a lot more money at the end of the day that's left over when the product sells. Now the downside, the flip side to that, if you make a bad decision, you're out the money. The manufacturer is not gonna take the product back. You made the commitment the moment that you said, I'm gonna buy XYZ amount of units of this product. If it sells, great. If it doesn't sell, tough luck, start over, right? Now, if we're focused on the upside here, the, the, the positives of private label, 
We can also look at it as you building a grouping of products. So let's say you go into the kitchen niche and you start selling knives. Well, another product that you could sell with that is a cutting board. Another product that you could sell with that is a blender. Another product that you could sell with that is a cheese board, right? There's a ton of different options, right? So if you look at most brands, they tend to be grouped together with the kinds of products that they sell, right? And that's what the benefit of private label is, is it allows you to build a real brand. Now, the benefit of building a real brand you could sell it for high multiples if it does enough volume. You could sell it for a lot of money and you can make a quite a nice exit or you could just sit on it and make tons and tons of cash on it. But again, the downside, the risk involved is, you know, you might only have one shot, right? Depends on how much cash you have access to or how much tolerance for pain that you have. If you make a mistake, you're out you're done right you like you one one strike you're out right you might not be able to recover from it so private label while it has the most upside also by far has the most risk of of the three and i find it to be the most challenging to execute because the product research is going to be hard you might get caught up in the paralysis by analysis state where if i'm going to have to take my money out and risk thousands of dollars on buying this product or manufacturing this product I hope that I did a good job with my research. And if you don't have a lot of experience selling on the Amazon marketplace, if you don't really know kind of how the marketplace operates, high likelihood that you're gonna make a mistake from the get. You're probably gonna mess up the first couple times. And if you can absorb it, great learning experience, but if you can't and that money's tight, probably not the best way for you to go. And finally, the number five way of doing it, I did this way for a long time. Um, not really that great of a model at this point with the Amazon marketplace, but we have drop shipping. Now, when you talk about drop shipping, most of the time people think of drop shipping on Amazon as using retailers like Walmart, Home Depot, Target, Lowe's, some of these big box retailers that we're all familiar with. Now, technically it's against the rules, very challenging to execute on. I did it for a lot of years. I actually have done it for seven years and I created a software company and all of us were doing it. We had thousands and thousands of customers come through our doors that used our software over the years and very few of them are still in the game because it's against Amazon's policies. They suspend you for it. It, it was a cash cow and it was good. Now the other side of that is wholesale, using wholesalers who will drop ship for you. Downside, not that easy to scale, tons and tons of competition. You're generally gonna be operating on razor, razor, razor thin margins because there's no risk, right? There's no skin in the game. You can get set up with a software that can list tens of thousands of products into your store. And it's the same software all the other sellers that are using that supplier are using, right? So there's no like real advantage to doing it. There's no like, there's no skill as far as like sourcing is concerned if you know the right tools and softwares to use. If you could list 10,000 products from a wholesaler right now into Amazon and 30 other sellers have that same exact software, it really becomes a matter of who's willing to take the least money. Now, again, on the upside, you can get 10,000 products listed into the store. You could start making some cash. You could start making some cash flow. However, what you do with that cash flow, probably want to be able to take it and move it into one of the other models that we've talked about. As far as drop shipping is concerned, probably the most challenging of all of them to really, it's, it's quick, it's fast to get going, but scalability is challenging. And on top of that, depending on your supply chain, if you're using the wrong types of suppliers, the big box retailers, for example, it's a matter of time until you get a suspension notice from Amazon. It's not a matter of when, it's, a matter of, it's, it's not a matter of like if, it's a matter of like, it's definitely gonna happen and how long from now is it gonna happen? It happens to everyone. Nobody, nobody gets out alive from it. I've had it happen to me several times and it's kind of like crack. You just keep coming back for some more, right? Seems to be what a lot of drop shippers do. However, if you're talking about safe, like predictable ways of going about it, I think that you should start retail or online arbitrage or both and then get your, get your skill set developed, learn how to pick products, learn how to make good buying decisions, learn how to manage your inventory, learn how to price your products to sell. And then once you start getting some cash flow coming in, make some investments now into going into wholesale, learn how to set up relationships with wholesalers, learn how to buy in bulk, 
learn how to get the products prepped, learn how to get them into Amazon, learn how to replenish your products, and then scale that up. Once you have enough cash flow going in on that, then go into private label. Now, learn how to build a brand, learn how to scale your, your business. Now, if you make a mistake, who cares, right? Like you already have these cash flows coming in from other areas, whereas if you're just starting and you're trying to pick your first private label product, it's, it's again, it's life or death, it's live or die. Whereas if you already have this cash coming in on the other models, you can make a mistake, learn from it, and go back at it again, you know? And now you, now you have a business that's kind of scalable and something that's gonna produce cash for you day after day after day. So I hope you get some value out of this video. If you like it, make sure you subscribe to the channel, make sure you smash the like button, make sure you share this because a lot of people need this information. There's a lot of people out there providing information on YouTube that aren't really giving you anything of any value. So again, I hope you got some value out of this. Talk to you next time.